Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out with John Conti, legendary boxer, former WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, of course. John, I wanted to ask you, we've just watched the screening of I Am Duran. You actually turned pro, I think, three years after Duran, so you started off in a similar era. Do you remember hearing much about him when you first turned pro? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it was great when I was in Liverpool. He started so early, didn't he? he was, what was he, 17 or something? 16 when he turned pro. Amazing, and he won, a, won the title at 20 years of age. Fantastic, amazing. I turned pro in 1971. I was 20, I was 20 then, uh, 1971. So yeah, these were fantastic, powerful names that inspired you. And did you, when you were kind of working out in the gyms and first making your way in the pro side of the sport, did you hear much about Duran, this you know, kid coming through from Panama who was violent and brutal and exciting? Yeah, like I said, I turned pro in 1971, uh, uh, and he won the title in 1970. Correct? I think so, yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, but yeah, certainly, yeah, I heard about him with the Ring magazine, boxing news, just you're reading all this stuff as a fighter anyway, you're all these great fighters and uh, who, are inspiring, who are inspiring you. His background, Port Area, I think that was covered in the film, talking about where a lot of fighters come from, with these uh, sort of poor areas. How similar was that to your own backstory and how you first got into the sport? Well, yeah, obviously not as poor, uh, as, uh, but uh, yeah, it was. Um, we had a big family, ten of us, and my dad always worked. He was a welder, and my mother as well, to try to keep us. But he was always it was poor, like everybody else around, uh, or most anyway, from where I came from. But in, also, it inspired you, which is what it does. How you respond to it, you know. And uh, I was fortunate with the boxing was the vehicle there. For me and great people in the boxing, great managers and train, well, trainers around KB Amateur Boxing Club put me into it. And my dad as well, he put me in, he got me sparring a bit when I with him. Well, he, I was sparring with him in the house when I was 10, but he put me in when I was 11 to KB Amateur Boxing Club. So it was great that these sporting vehicles were there for me. So it's either going to be music or sport, it seemed to me for me anyway, when I was either going to go through football, sport, or music. And uh, mine, I couldn't play any instruments or sing, so it was boxing. And you retired just before the Four Kings era really got into its stride. Do you ever regret that, that you didn't kind of benefit from some of that kind of extra publicity when the era really started to get into gear? Yeah, the Four Kings being... Being uh, Duran, Leonard, Hagler and, uh, and Hearns in the early 80s, basically, because you retired just before that really got going. Yeah. No, no, I don't really. No, it's fantastic. What I had at the time was the millions anyway, compa comparatively, you know, from where you're coming from. I was a, I was a hot carrier and uh, signing on a lot as well, out of work. Or, and uh, so uh, getting the money we were getting from boxing then was huge, you know, for what I was getting. When I turned pro and I come down to London, it was fantastic. Uh, and uh, now, because of television, opened it all up to millions or billions or whatever it is. But it's uh, all sorts of relative without being glib. It's, you've got to be able to keep it as well. That's a difficulty in itself. But, uh, but no, I don't regret that. It's great to see that it's there for the young, fight, for young fighters. Let me ask you as well, you came to epitomise boxing in Liverpool specifically. Tony Bellew did the same and has just retired. Who do you see now in the sport as kind of the standard bearer for Liverpool boxing? Who do you look at for that? Well, they're all great fighters from Liverpool, you know, the Smith family, all the background. It's huge, you know, but what I look to at the moment um, is the heavyweight, Anthony Joshua. I see him as fantastic. He's background Olympic champion, world champion. I think he'll be the one to unify the title against great fighters, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. But I think he's got the edge on them, on them all, you know. I, I really see him as... Uh, and he's playing catch-up as well. He started late at 17. And he's always looks to me as if he's playing catch up, but uh, he's there now. He should just give it. Don't try and play catch up. Just be free. Go either attacking or defending very positively. And he, I think he'll be the undisputed champion of the world. John Conti, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. We hope to see you again soon.